Tēnā koutou, uh, bonas dias, hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to church uh, this morning. Uh, a few different things happening this morning, so uh, there's going to be a bit of worship that uh, is going to be fantastic to do that together. Again, I'd really encourage you to engage in it. I know it's easy to treat this like, I don't know, just um, Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever church and just kind of sit back and, and watch, but I really encourage you to engage, so you know, sing along even if it feels a little weird. Uh, there's going to be an, a, a reading, there's going to be a prayer and a message and then Dave's going to bring a benediction at the end. So uh, I hope you um, not just enjoy it, because I, I do think it's good for us to enjoy church, um, but that you engage and that there's some things that the Spirit uses this morning, that Wairua Tapu uses this morning to connect you deeply with Jesus. Um, I really do, I pray every Sunday morning at church that people will walk out the doors after church really different. And that as they get in their car, they'll be like, wow, so glad we went to church. We met with Jesus. I pray that every morning, right, um, of every Sunday morning at church. Uh, so I'm praying that um, over you this morning, that you, when you finish this, that you're like, wow, we met with Jesus. Not that we did church or we watched church or anything weird like that, but that we met with Jesus. Wow. Um, he's cool with technology, right? Um, he, he knows how to connect with you through technology. So, yeah, may the Lord bless you this morning. Uh, may he engage deeply with you. May you have your spirit and your soul in a position, in a place that you're ready to receive, that you're ready to connect with him. Yeah, may the Lord bless you this morning. Cool. Welcome along, everyone. Um, it's good that we're gathering together again. Um, I just want to start in the word. Psalm 16, 1 to 2 says this. Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. And so today in song, I'd be really keen if we could really start dwelling on that. The fact that um, everything of worth that we have comes from him. You know, including his provision for us, but also his promises, um, and obviously, most important of all, um, our salvation. So let's sing. We're reaching out to welcome. this place again with your song flood our thoughts with wonder and more give us a great but never changing God until
says yes Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through to 42. And for this morning, we want to do something a little bit different. As a family, we're wanting to allow the Word of God to dwell in us richly. And so we want to invite you, I would like to invite you, uh, to listen to this passage as it is read and to pay attention to any particular words or phrases that stand out to you and to to take note of them but to not necessarily do anything with them. Then at the end of the passage we're going to be quiet for a small amount of time and that time we just want to consider what those words are and what those phrases are about. Then after that I will reread the passage again so that we can allow the Word of God to wash over us and to enter our minds and our hearts. And then we're going to take some time after that to talk to God about the words or phrases that have stood out to us, what He may be saying to us or how we may be responding or reacting to the Word of God. So let me read, family. As Jesus and His disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So we want to take this time now to pay attention to the words or phrases that have caught our attention, captured us, or maybe even read us in a way, to consider them, and to sit with those words. So I'll read the passage once more. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So let's now just take a short amount of time to talk to God about the words and phrases that stood out to us or in some way some way we felt a, a level of resistance or it poked a feeling in us to talk to God and ask what is it that he's saying this practice is less about us reading the word of God and more letting the word of God read us 
to help us identify where we are and how we are and to allow the Spirit of God to minister to us and speak to us during this time. So for the next wee while, talk to God about what you have thought and what you have felt. Kia ora whanau. So Dika, I'm glad to be here to pray with you. Let's pray. สารเสริญพระเจ้าผู้แสนดีนิทานุภาพทั้งสิ้นเป็นของพระองค์พระองค์ทรงทราบทุกสิ่งพระองค์ทรงเลือกที่จะรักและยุติธรรมพระองค์ทรงเป็นความรอดและความหวัง God how great you are, O powerful, O seeing, choosing love and justice, our salvation and hope. ขอบคุณพระเจ้าที่ลูกๆของพระองค์ได้รับการทรงนําโดยพระวิญญาณที่อยู่ในเราและเราสามารถเรียกพระองค์ว่าพระบิดาได้คือแอบมา Thank you as God's children are led by your spirit we by your spirit can call out Abba Father ขอทรงโปรดช่วยเราระลึกถึงวันนี้และอาทิตย์หน้าถึงแม้ว่าเราไม่ได้เจอกันแต่พระองค์ทรงเป็นพระบิดา Help us remember today in this coming week that even though we must keep apart from each other, you God are our ever Father, so close to us. ขอพระองค์ทรงโปรดช่วยเราที่จะวางภาระใจต่างๆลงแล้วให้เราเข้ามาใกล้พระองค์เพราะพระองค์ทรงเป็นผู้ค้ำจุนและเป็นผู้ให้ชีวิต Help us put aside distractions around us. And draw near, lean in, nestle into you, our sustainer and life. ขอพระองค์เจ้าทรงโปรดช่วยให้เราแล้วลึกถึงซึ่งกันและกันโดยการเท็กหรือการส่งข้อความหาซึ่งกันและกันหรือโทรศัพท์คุยกันหรือยืนคุยกับเพื่อนบ้านข้างรั้ว Help us care for each other, a text, a message, a phone call. Help us step over to the fence and talk to our neighbour. ลูกขอบคุณพระบิดาเจ้าสำหรับครอบครัวที่ CBC ลูกขอกราบทูลขอในพระนามแห่งองค์พระมหาเยซูคริสต์เจ้าเอเมน Thank you God for our family at CBC We ask these things in Jesus name Amen Morena Morena Buenos dias Good to see you here this morning for church Hope you're doing well Katie Pehiaque, how are you doing? I'm Katie here more, uh, more. Aho, I had a crazy early start this morning. Just a lot of stuff I needed to get through today, so I'm feeling feeling a little tired. Um, and yeah, Buenos dias, Come estas? Whenever I ask Spanish speakers uh, how they're doing, they're always polite and just muy bien, and that's always muy bien. Um, so I'm muy super tired, whatever that is. Eh? Hey, um, how are you doing with your lockdown? Uh, Again, don't forget how we love you as a church, and we'd love to be journeying with us with uh, this whole crazy time with you. So, uh, if there's anything you need, any way we could help you, uh, please go to the website cbc.net.nz, 
and you can get hold of us there and we'd love to um, just journey with you on this crazy time. We're doing good. We live out at uh, Mangatautari, uh, south of Kirikiraroa, south of Hamilton and uh, we're down a dead end road so we can go for little walks and um, yeah, it's been really beautiful out here. Uh, I've been talking to folks that are, got a, that are stuck in very small apartments in some cities around the world and they're struggling. Um, I've talked to a few families this week who the whole homeschooling thing was cool the first few days and now that's one off and the old one-eyed babysitter's kicking in and I'm like, man, whatever it takes to get through. So yeah, I pray the Lord blesses you through this time and that you can hold on and, um, and make it through. So again, we'd love to reach out, eh? If, if you're struggling with anything, I was thinking, um, if you're struggling, like, man, the homeschooling thing's driving you nuts, we have some really cool teachers uh, that are part of the church that would love to give you a call and maybe give you some ideas or even just hear you go nuts, you know? I don't know. Um, so whatever it is, eh, just, just let us know. We'd love to engage, and we really want to connect people and see community work at this um, super crazy time. Hey, let me pray as we get into the sermon, because the topic this morning is a little weird, and I know as soon as I say what the topic is, some of you are going to be like, yeah, and going to freak out, want to die behind the couch and hide or something. Uh, so let me start with a little prayer. Yeah, Lord, I pray a blessing on these cool people. Thanks that they're investing uh, in their life. Uh, they're investing in their relationship with you, uh, incredible God, and they want to grow and change and become more like Jesus, which is just wild, God, eh? So I pray a real blessing on them in the name of Jesus. I pray your journey with them through this crazy lockdown time with the, the excitement of it and the fear and it, the anxiety, just wherever people are at, I pray, pray you meet them. I pray you journey with them and I pray you really lift their souls. Um, speak to us this morning, God. We're not tuning in. We're not engaging with this to just kind of tick our Jesus box. We want to learn more about who you are. We want to learn more about who you are which then in turn helps us to learn more about who we are uh, and how we can serve you better. So speak this morning, we're really listening. Yeah. Ki te ingoa o te mātua o te tama iti ko te wairua tapu in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Alrighty. Hey, let me start with a little story before I let you know what I'm talking about. Um, one of my friends, uh, Dan, who's one of the craziest people I've ever met. Love you, Dan. Uh, Dan's uh, part of... Um, uh, CBC Church, he's on the coffee team, he's one of the leaders in Merge, and just a beautiful guy. He speaks faster than anyone I've ever met in my life, but he's amazing. Uh, so Dan was out walking, he gave me permission to share the story. Dan was out going for a walk on Monday, I think it was, and uh, saw an elderly lady in her garden on the other side of the road, so he's keeping good social distance, and uh, he just called out to her, good morning, and they ended up having a really cool conversation for around 20 minutes. And yeah, it was awesome. And then Dan went um, off and got home and thought, oh, how can I bless this lady? So he baked muffins. I'm sure he used gloves and a mask and the whole nine yards. Um, Dan baked some muffins and went around and just dropped the muffins on her doorstep uh, and with a little note and his cell phone number. And she texted and now him and uh, Dan, and Dan's what, early 20s? Um, Dan's now texting with this elderly lady and just starting to share the love of Jesus and bless. And I'm like, who is Dan, right? I'm like, millennials are like the curse of the world at the moment. Those blasted, entitled millennials and all this stuff. Um, and then you got Dan racing around blessing old ladies with baked muffins. I'm like, what young 20-year-old is baking muffins on a Tuesday morning? Oh, you're amazing, Dan. Love you, man. Such an example, right, of what I want to talk about Um this morning. Ah, oh, it just cracks me up. I just can't see you baking muffins, Dan. I love you, but it just cracks me up. Um, the marker that we're looking at this morning, right? I mean, we're talking about this whole markers of maturity, these indicators that I'm growing in my relationship with Jesus. So the marker that we're looking at this morning is simply called organic outreach. Now, I, I know as soon as I say that word outreach, I feel like me, when I hear outreach, I'm just like, yeah, it just makes me want to dive behind the couch, hide in the, the closet or whatever. Um, I grew up in the 80s, right? And the 80s was just a crazy time. And I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but this is how it was for me. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, and whenever anyone talked about outreach, they were usually talking about one of two things. Um, one, just kind of pouncing on people as you walk down uh, the street and trying to tell them about Jesus, almost whether they really wanted to or not. Uh, and the other way was to stand on the street and just preach at people, right, and, and tell them. Um, about God and about Jesus. Uh, research has shown both those things are like 99.9 recurring uh, useless. <laughs> um, I've got good friends who still believe in 
uh, just going down the street and just striking up conversations with people and I've talked to them and said how many of those conversations really do lead to someone really uh, moving into a relationship with Jesus and growing and one of my good friends every time I ask him he shakes his head <laughs> and he'll be like yeah no one yet and he's been doing that for years and years so maybe he's doing it wrong um, don't judge me but from my experience that's not the best way to do it and it's certainly not the way that we're going to see modeled in some verses um, this morning so when I hear that whole word, word um, outreach it just freaks me out and I'm like ah, I don't want to pounce on people um, I read a book a little while ago and the guy was talking about he worked for an organization uh, where you had to share your faith right tell someone about Jesus share the hope that you have um, with at least 10 people every day as part of kind of the I don't know the rules of the organization and at first he said it was awesome at first it really forced him to rethink how he lived his life and how he engaged with people and it was all cool but he said after a few months it just became this like ritual this religion that he was doing and he said it got to the so I was reading this in the book he said it got so ridiculous that one day he was coming home from work uh, he was um, going past a bus stop because he said bus stops are good places to pounce on unsuspecting people uh, because they can't go anywhere because they need to wait for the bus. Um, and he said he, he started talking to someone and they did not want to hear about God or anything. It's the end of the day, they're smashed from work or whatever it was. And he said then the bus pulled up and he was literally holding them, trying to stop them from getting on the bus so he could finish telling them so he could tick his little Jesus box for the day, his 10th person. And he said in the midst of it, all of a sudden the insanity of this whole thing hit him, how ridiculous it is that, that this person didn't want to hear and he's trying to jam it down their throat. And oh, it's just like, this is ridiculous. Um, Again, I know not all, all people that, that, that want to share their faith uh, by, by talking to people on the street or whatever are that crazy, right? So I'm not trying to be disrespectful here. Um, but the way that the Bible talks about this is quite different. And to me, a heck of a lot cooler and a heck of a lot less terrifying. <laughs> yeah. um, so the title of this message is Organic Outreach, right? We've been going through all these um, cool uh, markers of maturity. Um, right, we talked about community and humble service and joyful generosity and this organic outreach. So, what does organic even mean? Right, it doesn't just um, mean sometimes really nasty food. Right, I looked it up on Google because um, Google knows everything, of course, and Google was saying uh, organic. This is cool. So, two little definitions: denoting or characterized by a harmonious relationship between the elements of a whole. What? Let me say that again. Donating, uh, don't, <laughs> sorry, denoting or characterized by a harmonious relationship between the elements of a whole. So the whole thing, there's a harmonious aspect to it. I, I love that. The way I, I talk to someone about how awesome Jesus is, the way I talk to someone about the hope that I have, it needs to be harmonious, right? It needs to be gentle. It needs to be natural. Um, another uh, definition is characterized by gradual or natural development. I love that, a gradual development. It's not me wandering down the street and I'm like, there's an unsuspecting pounce, you know, on them or whatever. Um, it's me talking about that. Jesus rocks, man. He's changed my life. <laughs> Let me tell you how, in a natural way, um, in a gradual way that just grows, develops, um, as the relationship develops over time. So I wanted to kind of come up with a bit of a definition. So taking those understandings of organic and associating them with this idea of outreach. I even hate that word. It freaks me out. Um, this idea of, of sharing my hope, right? The hope that I have because God's got me because Jesus thinks I'm awesome, which blows my brains. This is the little definition, definition I came up with. Organic outreach is spending time with people I know. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, living the life Jesus has called and empowered me to live and naturally telling them about my relationship with Jesus. So there's three little parts in there, spending time with people I know. One of the things I'm going to talk about is it's, it's not um, this, this organically sharing my faith. is not pouncing on random people. It's developing relationships with people because I actually care about them and love them <laughs> and, and want to be part of their life. And then naturally that, that, that why are you so weird, Craig? Why are you different is going to come up. I'm going to talk about that. Um, the next little part of that definition is living the life Jesus has called and empowered me to live. It's just living the way Jesus calls me to live. I'm not having to do secret things or learn special formulas for sharing my faith or anything crazy. I'm just doing life with people that I love and care about. Um, and then the last bit just is naturally telling them about my relationship with Jesus. That's it. I'm not saying some weird thing or anything crazy. I'm just talking to them about how Jesus rocks. 
how Jesus is the core of everything I am and everything I have. He's the one who empowers me and guides me. And I am desperate to tell people about him. So this is not a run and hide in the closet kind of faith, right? Hopefully this is a kind of cool faith. And hopefully if I, when I started this, you were like, ah, oh, now you're just more like, oh. <laughs> and I want to unpack some ideas that by the end of it, you're not, oh, at all. You're like, hey, I could actually do this. So that's where we're going from, oh, to, oh, to, I can do this. Hey, um, the key verse I want to look at um, this morning is 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. I love this, right? Uh, and the New Living Translation, that's a, just a translation of the Bible I love. It says, if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. You can see the word organic coming through, right? Let me read it again. If someone asks about your hope as a believer, so they ask, there's no pouncing on them, right? Um, always be ready to explain it. Be ready. Be prepared. Have something you've thought about. Um, but do this in a gentle and respectful way. Um, the, the English Standard Version, so just a different version of the Bible, says it like this. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that's in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. I love that again, eh? Being gentle with them, respecting their time, respecting that they're smart and intelligent, beautiful human. Um, but it's that same idea, right? Being prepared um, to make a defense to anyone who asks you. They're taking the initiative. Nowhere in these verses does it say pouncing on people, you know. Um, it's all about living a life so that people are like, you are weird. <laughs> you are different. Why? <laughs> And then we can share. And that's what I want to unpack. So let me pull, uh, pull um, three little concepts uh, out of that, that cool verse from First Peter, right? Uh, here's the first one. Uh, sharing the hope I have is never forced, right? Sharing the hope I have is never forced. Remember it says gentleness and with respect. So hopefully you're watching this with um, a loved one or <laughs> um, someone that you just endure. Nah, hopefully you're watching this with Fano or some friends or something. So turn to them now and just say, it's never forced, right? It's never forced. Awesome. Um, whakarunga mai, whakarunga mai. I know when I say that in church, everyone then's like, it's never forced. Hey, so how are you doing? What are we doing after church? Do you like pizza? <laughs> and just start chatting some. Drawing you back in, right? Um, so I love this, eh? sharing the hope I have is never forced. Uh, I love how Peter says, if someone asks. <laughs> I love that. If someone asks. It, to me, this flips this whole idea around. Instead of me sitting at home and kind of scheming who shall I pounce on. It's the whole thing. I can't think about it like that. It's more like, who do I love? Who do I care for? Who's naturally in my circle of, of life that I'm going to bless and love and pray for and hang out with and play pool and do whatever the heck I'm doing, just doing life with them, but in a weird Jesus way, which is natural, right? I'm going to talk more about that. Um, at the same time, I'm not saying don't start off a conversation with someone who's interested. So it's not like someone just randomly out of the blue asks you, you know, like, no. I haven't developed a relationship with you. Back off. It's not like that at all. So let me tell a couple of silly stories um, about how I've um, shared my faith at different times. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a few, one or two tattoos on my arms and, and other places. Um, and the, this is intentional because I can be a bit of a wimp in telling some people about the hope that I have. Uh, so I thought, man, if I cover my body in like verses and Bible stuff, then <laughs> maybe they'll ask me, which happens all the time. So these um, these drawings on me are from the Book of Kells. So if you don't know the Book of Kells, Google it. It's beautiful. Not now. Back. Come back. No. Um, it's beautiful. It's a, a an ancient manuscript done around 800, 900 AD by Irish monks, where they uh, made a copy of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the story of Jesus. And as they did back then, they decorated it just beautifully with animals that they saw and all this Celtic design. I love my, my ancestry is Celtic, so I love this Celtic. But this was real intentional um, because people sometimes will come up to me and they'll be like, wow, that's so beautiful. What is this about? And I'll be like, oh, it's actually from the Bible. And people are like, what? I don't know, the Bible had pictures <laughs> all this time. I thought it was just words. And I'm like, no, 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 and I can tell. But it gets a conversation going, right? Tama, I remember um, I was sitting in a cafe in Cambridge and I didn't even know um, Tama back then. And Tama comes up to me and he's like, hey, and he goes, is that from the Book of Cows? And I was like, who is this like legendary? He is super wise. So, um, so the idea is it starts it off and then I can explain something about uh, the reason for the hope that's within me, right? Um, I've had heaps of times where people have come up and read my tattoos and then started a conversation. Uh, my favourite one, and I think I might have said this at church a while ago, was I was in a cafe in Auckland, uh, it was probably last year, and an old uh, Māori lady came up to me, and she just walked up to me, and I was, I was talking with a friend, and she goes, uh, have you um, have you found it? And I was like, what? If 
I found what? And then she pointed to my arm and goes, the better place. And I was like, what? The better what? And I was like, oh my goodness. So I have this tattoo um, on my arm here that's from Hebrews 11. And it just says, uh, I am a foreigner and a nomad uh, here on earth. I'm looking for a better place. I'm looking for a better place. And I said, oh my goodness, I really have found a better place. And she was like, what? What is it? <laughs> and I talked to her about the hope that is within me, like Peter said. And how Jesus guides me and directs me and cares for me and powers me. All this. And she was just like fascinated. It was really cool. Um, the crazy thing was I was meeting with a pastor at the time. So after I kind of shared a bit of my journey, he kind of jumped in and said, Hey, our church is literally around the corner. Um, you should come along sometime. We have heaps of tongue with a whenua coming. They'd love to greet you and welcome you. And it was just really cool. All from having um, crazy shady tattoos. So again, there's no pouncing. I wasn't sitting in a cafe going, who, you know. I'm just hanging out with my friend who's the pastor up there and, and a lady comes up and asks. So it's natural, right? It's organic. Um, look at this cool quote. Dave, uh, we were talking about this earlier in the week, um, Pastor Dave, and he sent me this cool quote. Uh, we draw people to Christ not by loudly discrediting what they believe, by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. Man, I just love that. That is so beautiful. Let me read the end again. But by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. That's what we're talking about, right? Tattoos is a weird one. I want to unpack some more things in a minute. But, but this whole idea that Peter's saying is it's when people ask, right? Why are you different? The world is falling apart. People are freaking out. People financially are worried. Emotionally, spiritually, people are just really afraid and anxious. But you're freaking out. But... Not like I am. What's the difference, right? What, what's going on? And then we explain that hope to, to folks. Um, okay, so the first one is this whole thing. This hope I have is not forced, right? I'm not forcing it on people. Uh, here's the second one. Sharing the hope I have is just telling my story. So turn to some people around you, hopefully. Um, or if you're by yourself, just look in a mirror and say it to yourself. Um, and say, whoa, I just tell my story. Okay, so I just tell my story. Okay, fuck my, come back, come back, come back. Get off Google, right? Off Facebook. <laughs> um, unless you're watching this on Facebook, then you can carry on. Hey, so this is not some tricky formula for telling someone about Jesus, right? It's not like there's 18 points, and if you miss one, they'll never know the truth. You know, <laughs> you must memorize the formula. There's no formulas, right? Um, you're just living your life and, and sharing your story, sharing your hope. Um, a story that's kind of crazy is, um, and Joyce, my wife, allowed me to tell the story. I checked with her. So Joyce and I, um, we lived in America for a whole bunch of years, and we spent four years in Chicago as part of our study. And we were at a, a university over there, a pretty big one. And uh, one of the, the papers that we were doing was um, this: how to talk to people about Jesus. And this is it was a pretty old school. This is a long time ago. I'm very old. See the white. And um, the, the, it was very formulaic, and you had to kind of tick all these boxes and do this stuff. And my te my testimony is loony. If you ever want to hear it, tell me. It's got idols and Hare Krishnas and all sort of crazy stuff in it, and axes and goodness knows what. Um, but my wife was quite tame, and so she wrote hers. I wrote mine out and probably got an A because I'm an amazing student. No, I don't know what I got right. Um, and Joe wrote hers and got like a C or even a C minus. And the lecturer's like, "You need to write it out again. You know, this is disastrous because it didn't follow his special little formula and tick all his little boxes." And I remember him saying that it wasn't. Um, it wasn't like wild enough. Nothing terrible happened. And, and then Jesus saved you and all this kind of stuff. And I remember Joseph and I talking about it afterwards. And we were like, where the heck do you see in the Bible that you have to have like, everything's falling apart. You know, it's just madness. So there's no special formula, right? It's just you telling people um, your story. Just telling people how real Jesus is to you. Uh, telling people, man, there was this time that I was, things were hitting the fan and God guided or a friend. To, you know what? Just being real natural, right? Um, it's not making up stuff. It's not trying to tick boxes. It's not trying to find the perfect formula. So when I tell someone about the hope that's within me, they're like, whoa, you know? Um, it's not that, right? So it's not, you know, as I pulled the needle out of my arm that I was about to OD on, picked up the machine gun to shoot the 10 men in front of me, I suddenly heard a voice say, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And I dropped the machine gun, fell to my knees, and became a pastor. You know, it's not, it's not the special formula. It's just telling people, and let me tell you about Jesus. 
Let me tell you about how he's a cool part of my life, right? Jesus has got me in the midst of this craziness, right? Um, Jesus cares for me. He guides me. He empowers me. Um, even though life is like this, these hard times and there's some deep valleys, there's some high heights through all the madness, I know that God has got me, man. I stuff up and I screw up and I say dumb things and do dumb things, but through it all, man, Jesus has me. <laughs> he gives me security. He brings me peace, right? It's just sharing my story. Um, I think it's good to have thought about this beforehand. Again, it's not formulaic, but just to have a think. Man, if someone says to me, hey, why are you so weird? <laughs> you know, why are, everything's hitting the fan and I can see it's hitting the fan and you're um, far now, but you're not losing the plot. Why? But you're not like, um, uh, oh, you know. So I think it's good to have thought about it. When someone asks me, because you are living different. When someone asks me, what would I say? Oh, I could just talk about this and oh, there was that, that time. Yeah. Is that right? Pretty simple. Hey, so the first thing about sharing the hope I have is it's never forced, right? It's never forced. Um, the second thing is it's just me telling my story. There's no rocket science involved here. Um, and the cool thing is that the person that knows your story the best is you. Who would have thought? And Noah can argue and be like, hang on, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it's like, wow, well, it's my story, bro. So like it or nick off. Hey, the third point is uh, sharing the hope I have is done with gentleness and respect. Um, gentleness and respect. I've talked heaps about this, but I love that little aspect in there. Um, Peter says it's done with gentleness. It's done really respecting that person. Um, I think standing on a street corner screaming at someone, God loves you, as you're yelling through a megaphone. Oh, no, that's super respectful. It's certainly not gentle. Um, but just journeying with people, just living my life. Um, shows gentleness, shows respect. I love these three little points from Peter, right? Okay, so this is all good. Hopefully by now you've gone from outreach to oh and you're kind of like okay i think i can do it um, let me try and get you right down to the huh i can actually do this stage right um so how do i do this to me the key is just live a life of love it's not rocket science live a life of love again remember the whole point is that they are asking me um, my friends my my whanau, my whanau, sorry are asking me uh why i have this hope right why are you different why are you weird um and so a couple of verses that, that to me really bring out this whole living a life of love. And to me, these tie right into this whole series that, that two weeks ago, humble service, last week, living a life of generosity. This is what we're talking about, right? Um, so let me read this verse. I've got it here. Whoa. On my iPad, um, John 13, uh, 34 to 35. If you've got a device, it'd be good to grab it, eh? Um, follow along. Like I always say, you never know if I'm not just making this stuff up, right? <laughs> Um, so let me, I'm not making this up, so uh, let me read this. So John 13, 34 and 35 says, uh, this is Jesus speaking, it's right at the end of his life, right before he's about to be crucified, so it kind of gives it a bit more weight, I think. And he says, so now I'm giving you a new command. Uh, so it's a command from Jesus, so it's kind of like, well, we need to listen. It says, love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples or that you're my, my followers, right? You're my apprentices is a way to think about it. Um, one of the things I just love in there is this whole idea of it's, it's love, but it's love that reflects the sacrificial love of Jesus. <laughs> I'm so glad he doesn't say, you guys just love each other how it works out for you, because some of us are pretty selfish in our love when we're honest. Um, not you, of course, you're amazing. <laughs> Me, you know, I don't know. That guy beside you, you know. Um, heaps of us are selfish in our love, and I love how Jesus says, um, love as I've loved. How's he love? He's right about to go. The next day he goes to the cross and like and dies to prove his love for people. It's pretty extreme, right? Um, and I, I love that ending. Your love for one, another, for one another will prove to the world that you're my, um, you're my disciple. So how do I... How do I cause people to want to ask me about the hope? I just love them. <laughs> the way Jesus loves them, a sacrificial kind of way, putting them before me, all this cool stuff that we know. Um, it's not formulas. It's not scheming. It's just loving. Who's Jesus put in your circle? Who's God put in your circle that you're like, yeah, man, maybe some of them are hard to love. Maybe some of them are easy to love and care for. Speak grace and truth and helpfulness into their lives um, and love them with that sacrificial love that um, 
that Jesus calls us to live. And, and the idea is that Peter says that Jesus is saying here is that when we live like that, when we love like that, they will go, why? Why are you different, like I've been saying? Hey, so the, the other verse I want to look at is Matthew 5, um, 14 to 16. This is cool. This is, I mean, all the verses are cool because it's the Bible, I know, but I just love this one. Eh? So um, Matthew 5, well, um, Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Um, just says, uh, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Um, uh, uh, you know what he's saying, right? He, he's saying in there, um, if someone wants to light the house, and this is you know back 2,000 years ago, you light a lamp and you put it somewhere high so the light goes everywhere. He's like, no one lights a lamp and then like covers it up. And he's talking about the same way with us. We have a light within us. You are a light. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, if God is living within you, if Wairua Tapu, if the Holy Spirit is living within you, you are a light. Um, you have his power, you have his guidance within you, right? And he's saying, just live, just live like you would as, as God guides you and directs you and you will be a light on a hill. I love that. Um, and then it's this last little, um, oh, instead a lamp is placed in a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And then verse 16 is real, really important. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now, again, I'm not saying we don't, you know, look for opportunities to share our faith. I'm not saying that, but it's interesting here that Peter says they will ask you, and Jesus right here says the same um, thing. Uh, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out. Um, it, it's not let your voice shine out, let your megaphone shine out, let your pouncing on people shine out. It's not that at all. I love that. Hey, it's let your good deeds. Um, where do good deeds come from? Our heart. They come from love, care, compassion for people. Um, that doesn't come from me scheming and thinking, how can I show love to them so that it's not it? That's not love. Remember, it's gentleness and respect. This this kind of organic outreach, and I still hate using that word outreach. This organic just telling people about Jesus, right? Um, it's never forced. It's just telling my story. It's done with gentleness and respect. It's never jamming the Bible down someone's throat. Whether they want it jammed down or not. We just don't see that in the Bible. I love that, eh? Hey, so this is me. i got a little C.S. Lewis quote coming because I love him. Um, but just as I'm finishing, hey, just be listening now to the Holy Spirit. Um, how can you do this? Who's he putting into your mind right now that you're like, man, yeah, I've got to be. I need to work on loving them more. I've been real lazy on loving them more. Oh, they're just really hard to love. Um you are a light, man. You have the truth. How are you going to live a life of love, right? How are you going to live this life in, in a gentle, respectful way, share the truth of Jesus? Let me finish with this little C.S. Lewis quote. I love to say, uh, don't shine so others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. Let me read it again. Don't shine so others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. That's the whole point, eh? That's why we live this life of love, so that people will see Jesus shining out of us, because we are a light. Awesome. Cool. Kakitano. Family, to finish this morning, we wanted to read a benediction, a blessing uh, to part ways with. This morning, I'm going to be reading a blessing and benediction from uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in the last two verses of that chapter. And so we just invite you now, uh, as you sit in your homes, in your whares, uh, wherever you are and whoever you may be with right now, be it with Fano or just by yourself, we invite you to, to stand or to sit, uh, however you may best receive these words and this blessing. And if you feel comfortable to put your hands out just as a physical gesture to say, Lord, I receive these words and the blessing that comes from them and from you. Let's pray. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. Amen.
Have a great day. Bye.